Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. I regret to report that both our Jedi Order and the Republic have fallen, with the dark shadow of the Empire rising to take their place. This message is a warning and a reminder for any surviving Jedi. Trust in the Force. They've outgrown their age of rebellion, dull the Empire's edge. Defeated Imperial generals and the Pirate Queen's dredge. They've been soldiers and scoundrels, what's there left to be? How about Las Acolytes looking for their force and destiny? There's a seer, hermit, investigator, and teacher better watch your back or vibe or rings gonna reach you. Will this team find the light or will darkness win the day? Find out with the heroes of the hardy and wave. Welcome to Heroes of the Hydean Way. This is a Star Wars actual play podcast, and we're playing in Fancy Flight Games' Force and Destiny system using the Chronicles of the Gatekeeper adventure as developed by Tim Cox and Max Brook. This is Hillary's Force Adve- This is Hillary's Force Vision for Act 1, and I'm Ben, the GM for this adventure. I'm Ren, and we are, I guess, segueing back into the ones where we have to be in character, so I'm I'm still going to act as me for for a moment. And I play Skip, but if I were a character in this game, I, as Ren, in terms of Force powers, would want influence. How about you, Christine? Hi there, everybody. I'm Christine, and I play Kesh, the Trandoshan Mystic Seer. I think I would pick the power of Manipulate, that way I could fix my technology issues. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you do have yeah. that's pretty cool. a remarkable yeah. amount of technology issues. Yep. And you always have. You're right. And then manipulate would get you get a lot of mileage out of that. I would. I would. <laughs> Think about it. Cars, computers, stove. I've broken that. Microwave. Damn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Christine, maybe you should just become a hermit. May- maybe. I think what else I've broken. It's a lot. Oh, a million Hearts. things. Oh, 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 I, I, know. I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> Just, it only matters if you have a mechanical heart, though, Ren. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> Beep boop. Hey, Leslie, <laughs> what would your force power be? P.S. We weren't prepared for this, and I don't know them as well as anybody else, except the, for maybe the Ren, make one up. who knew what was going to happen. <laughs> I'm Leslie. I can introduce myself. Christine, thank you very much. Uh... <laughs> Honestly, knee-jerk reaction, enhance. It's a good one. How nice would it be to be able to just move on your own and jump? I mean, how cool could you just jump from point? To- I, yeah, no, enhance. I want to jump like a crazy person. Yeah. I want to jump like an anime character. So, see, and this is where I question having given Kesh enhance. Uh, I would not want that damage to my knees in the landing. <laughs> well, but, but that's a beautiful thing about enhance. That's the a force, force power. cushions you. Yeah, that's, oh, okay. I mean, that's that's I think some of the implication of enhance is that the force is not only propelling you, but also cushioning your fall. Yeah, cradling you gently. Yeah, like a caring hand. Okay, maybe and I should change my answer to that because then I could just jump everywhere instead of walking. It'd be you creep. probably just want to heal. Let's be honest, Christine. Well, oh. the nice thing about enhance also is that jumping is only one part of it. The other part is it just makes you better at anything, any sort of like physical activity at all. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I could. Yeah. All I the could certainly use that coordination hands. help. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> makes you a great starfighter pilot, which mm-hmm. I think we can all appreciate is an important skill. Uh, very much so. <laughs> what about you? I'm Brandon, and you know, honestly, I I, I do kind of wish I had a more interesting answer but i think it would be hard not to just go with move i mean fair enough yeah alter is really cool too yeah i i I do really like the idea of being able to just do things hands-free we start off with a close look at hillary's blue purple face as they're rummaging around in the silvered shell the ship that the heroes are on they have yet to have actually left Arbuin but they're just packing up and Hillary's just like setting aside their calf set then things kind of go out of focus 
for a bit, and a bit of Hillary's memories start to play. And it goes back to something happened a few years ago. We go to a circus, of all things, where we see 11 Alina and a Cheddar fan in a huge variety of very colorful, very moving costumes as a couple of the Alina come in for a final landing as part of a tower to a roaring applause come down and take bows. Hillary then is stepping up and had been holding Leisha's hand. Do you want to take it over from there, Leslie? Sure. So as the tower comes together, uh, Alicia and Hillary step forward holding hands. He kisses her hand and nods. And then he steps forward once more and gestures widely with both hands toward the crowd. And then he turns around and he gestures at his family once again and he bows to them. And he turns back. We are the Flying Al Oryx, and this has been our show. Although it was a whirlwind, it is now time to go. We thank you for your patronage and hold your laughs at heart. We also hold your credits, so we won't starve for our art. You came to us as strangers, but perhaps now we are friends. We are the Flying Al Oryx. May we meet you all again. And he bows once more and the lights go down. Then the scene shifts very quickly, almost as a stutter fade to standing there, Manchucho, Hillary's eldest of kids, and Alicia there, this being Hillary's final performance with them before departing, trying to take the Imperials or any hunters view from the Al-Oryx onto just Hillary and trying to drag the view that way. Yeah, Alicia is standing there, already changed out of their costume, and Manchucho standing like right close by, half out of their costume, half with a small leather vest on, as they're putting aside their sharpshooting equipment, which that's what Manchucho was doing. There's a knowing look passing between Alicia and Hillary, and... They share a look. They've already had the conversation. And neither can particularly bear to have it again. So, he gestures her down the hall to where Leontine and Renata are, are wrapping up their, their cleanup duties, to the twins cleaning up the, the, the last of their gear... And as she starts to leave, he, he just kind of brushes her hand and turns away to face Manchucho because he knows he's not going to get out without saying goodbye there either. Yeah, Manchucho comes up and like, You've told me why you have to go, but... Why? We're a family. We should be staying together. Every moment I stay with you. You are all more at danger than if I am not here. Uh, But we can take care of each other. We're good at what we do, and we don't just perform. All of this is us. Without you, how? (sighs) The family is, is more than I will ever be. And as we went on when my father passed, so you will go on without me. Uh, perhaps in a different form, since I'm taking the name, but you are all so brilliant. I cannot... This family, all of you, you are my heart, and I cannot put that at risk. So I will put less at risk, and I will come back to you. I I, I will. It, it is harder to track one person than it is a, a family, and... What is one tiny Alina in such a grand galaxy for the Imperials to care for, for the Hunters? I'll be out of this in no time. I'll, I'll meet you at the home planet, and we'll go. You, you'll, you'll have been there a while, and you'll show me around. And you'll look after everyone, right? As much as I can. 
but I, I hope that the hunters don't catch up to us without you here. Oh. <laughs> to my greatest shame, there's nothing I could do, even if I were. That's why the best, the best decision is for me to take the light and take the name and take the attention. I've, I've already, uh, I've already lined up a another show. Uh, it's not as grand as this event, but my name will be on a, a bill and then I will move on again quickly. And then smaller and smaller I will become until I wither away to the teeniest speck and I escape back into the family. Uh, if it wasn't for this empire. Uh, if it wasn't, yeah. Then Manchucho would just hug Hillary. Hillary returns the hug and then does that whole shuddering kind of, I'm not gonna cry, sigh. And then does a really big kind of clap on the back and then pushes away and says, don't forget to practice, because once I'm back, the show is on. I will see you on Aline. I will see you on Aline. Take care of them. I hold you all close. And he, he turns and disappears through another door. As the door closes behind Hillary, most of what was around it had been the passage wave that Hillary had left the rest of the Elorix. As Hillary goes through the door and closes it, the door slams shut and then disappears. Around Hillary is just a fog. The only light is coming straight down on Hillary as they stumble forward. Off in the background, from the direction that the door was, you hear... One of the younger kids yell at Daddy. Hillary is stumbling forward. As Hillary keeps moving forward through this darkness, the first scene that we get from Hillary just sort of walking and following this barely their path in the fog, it's a little bit lighter ahead. And then Hillary comes out and is seeing Kesh there, who's been in what seems to be a pretty long-running fight. The cybernetic arm on Kesh is a bit banged up. You can see a few cuts on Kesh, and Kesh's back is pressed up against a, a fruit cart. You can see, going in and out of the fog, it looks to be a group of... Sathari guardians that are coming in with their Deros and attacking and then dancing back away from Kesh as Kesh seems to be in a pretty nasty situation here fighting all in their lonesome against the guardians Hillary will run over to Kesh without thinking how odd the, the situation is environmentally but wondering where everybody else has gone so he, he runs and he skids to uh, his knees, landing next to or behind the fruit cart crate. About time you showed up. Well, you you forgot to send me an invitation to the party. Um, am I dressed well? <laughs> well, I don't see any weapons. Uh, do you know me? I'm I'm never quite quite prepared. Uh, you just stay very very still. Um. I've got, I've got something, I've got something, we'll, we'll get you patched up. You just, just stay. He'll kind of rummage and see what he can find on his person. He, he can't, he's not strong enough independently to start tearing strips off of his clothing. So he looks down and the first thing he finds is the band that he took from Alzul. And so he pulls that off and he starts tying off one of the parts of Kesha's bleeding legs and and then rummages and pulls out a handkerchief and is trying to put pressure on a, another wound. See? It, it will be fine. It, it, it will be all all right. Perhaps you should be concerning yourself less with these injuries and more with finding the one who did this to me. I can't... I, 
Who... How do I do anything? Who? Where am I going? How do I stop this? That's the question you have to answer. What will you do? Are all trend oceans as useless as you? <laughs> you, you old reptile. You, wait, wait here. Um, Skip. Skip always has things in, in their pockets. Um, I, I will be back for you. Just wait and hide. Don't, don't go anywhere. I'll find you. I think the last uh, Hillary sees of Cash is her sort of leaning back against the, the cart, her head rolling backwards, eyes closing as uh, Hillary vanishes back into the, uh, what, the fog? As Hillary is looking around for implements, the fog rolls in again, and as they're moving around more, the scene shifts as the fog takes over and then almost whooshes again and shows a different scene. This case, it looks to be a garden. You can see stars off in a side, and there's Koba, who's looks like you can even see like a bit of torn up grass behind them as it looks like Koba has come in from a bad landing and skidded to a stop in the middle of this garden. As Hillary does a tuck and roll coming out in a raised arms two point stand then looking over and seeing Koba there on the ground. <coughs> Ow. I dare say you took a bit of a tumble, my friend. What 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 hurts? Uh, tell me tell me how I can help you. Everything. Hurts. Okay, so we're we're not going to move you. Um, let Mo- Mogar move you slightly. Uh, do you feel like your neck is broken? Koba manages to like reach up with one of his probably actually arms because they're stronger and he's not standing right now, and grabs Hillary's shirt with probably a slightly blood slicked hand, and is like. It's too late for me. There's a lot of blood. Uh, no. Don't let them get away with this, Hillary. Tell, tell Cash or something if you have to. No. I, I've already seen Cash. She's not as bad as you. Find the one-armed gank. Uh, not literally. It's a metaphor for failure. I was about to say that's your backstory, not mine. This is a force vision. It's crazy. Your brain is just Koba? putting together associations. Koba, did you hit your head on the way down? <laughs> there may just there may have been some head trauma. Okay, just stay still. Stay. We're we're going to. Um, he pulls off his his little satchel that he always has and and tucks it kind of under Koba's head, and he takes his jacket off and kind of lays it over Koba. And okay. I know that I've, I've, I've not got a, a, a lot of your um, invest, investigatory gifts, but I I can find people. I can I can ask questions and I can get get people, and just lay there and think, not bleeding thoughts. Okay. Uh, I think I'll just close my eyes for a bit. Just try and just just a bit. Just a bit. Do, do something uh, by the time I wake up. Or I'll be very, very upset. Aren't you always? Isn't that your secret? Koba? Okay. Okay, Hillary. You're an Alorak. You can bounce back from this. You can find someone who will help them both. Just remember, uh, Kesh is, is by the fruit and, and Koba is in a garden. Easy, easy landmarks. Um, easy landmarks. We can do this. What this is, I don't know. And a one-armed gank? What does a gank even look like? Oh, Koba, just hold on. I, I, you hold on with all four. You can do this. I'll be right back. I'll be, I'll be right back. Um, yes. 
he kind of pats him very gingerly on the shoulder and stands up and, and looks around into the, the shadows. Okay. Okay. And he starts walking. As you're walking into the shadows, you feel this turns into a very biting cold fog as you keep walking, as you try and find something or someone. Of course, as I leave my jacket. (sighs) It's biting even through your jacket. As you continue forward, the fog envelops again. It parts, but in a very different fashion. You can see off in the distance a dark-haired human that has a very military-looking jacket and even an ascot. I'd, I'd call that an ascot. That tracks. You see this person standing off in a distance, and in front of them you can see a person in some form of heavy armor. Some laminate style armor, like a stormtrooper or a Mandalorian. The bodyguard for this person is seeming to come at you, looming, and as they are rolling, this armored person is rolling their shoulder forward, and you can see what looks to be like some form of heavy weapon. At which point, you feel a hand grab upon the back of your vest and yard you in behind a crate at which point you're looking eye to eye with Skip Skip had been just coming back from taking a shot with her giant air rifle at the armored person Hillary Skip what? how did you get here get, get closer oh, I'm, I'm like our faces are almost touching. How close do you want me to be? I just want you behind the crate. Oh, I, I can do that. I'm, I'm, very, I'm very small. Remember that. Why aren't you with the others? What happened? It's a really long story. We don't have time for that. Well, what, ha- look. what happened? Look. Look. What? What am I looking at? Well, I mean, everything. Um, but, so, okay. Um, I've been trying, you know. Uh, but I, I don't have a whole lot of darts left. <laughs> oh, you always do your best, Skip. You're brilliant. Oh, I don't know. I... Mm. I have to give you something. Well, I, I, I can't use your gun. It's taller than I am. Oh, no. You, no. That, that wouldn't work. No. You're bleeding! Uh... And uh, Skip's gonna produce a, a small little bag... Like a little leather sack with a drawstring on it, out of out of they were their uh one of their hip pouches. I need you to take this. Okay. It's, he, he takes it. And kind of like looks over their shoulder at at Gudge. I'm. You're, you're the only one that's gonna keep going now. I think. I think. Yeah. I... What? So I need you to take Gudge. No, Gudge doesn't listen to me. Gudge listens to you. Which is... is... Those are Gudge's snacks. Uh, Well, then, then you should hang on to them. And I will, um... One moment, one moment. And he he pulls off his vest. He's now just wearing his, his dapper little now blood-stained button down and he's crams it kind of under skips torn open or shot open you wear a jumpsuit it's kind of like a bunch of layers camping utilitarian garb okay. <laughs> so <laughs> like a boy hillary scout <laughs> carefully, hillary carefully peels back some layers and starts you know folds the uh no the, no, no don't don't no. waste it on me don't it's look. not a waste i don't need it i look, don't need it look, look it. i'm fine don't ever Just... tell koba that i said this or cash but i i'm kind of pessimistic right now so it's not really worth it no 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 you you can't you can't give up hillary none of us can I'll, I'll, figure, I'll fix this. I'll fix no. this. I will. Yeah, you'll fix this. 
by going and stopping them and taking Gudge with you because I don't want Gudge to see me die. No. And Skip Why is gonna alone? push you out from behind the crate. Go. Put your hand on that vest. No. Skip just puts their hand on some other part of their vest in confusion. No, no. The, put pressure on the wound. I can't. I need both hands for the gun. I'm going to cover you with I... as much ammo as I have left. No, I, I... Just go. Just listen to me. For once, somebody needs to listen to me. But... I'm Fine. not listening to you Fine. anymore. Stop. Bye. Stop. Damnation. Go. And he... He runs, not directly toward the people, but away from Skip. But as he runs, because he was told to go, he goes. But he runs screaming and yelling and waving his arms. And, like, if he has something on his person that's shiny, he's just making a mess. And and drawing as much attention as he can. Gudge is not having a fun time of trying to cling to your shirt. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, fair. How does Hillary skid to a stop? Or does Hillary skid to a stop, or do they just keep running? I think Hillary would keep running until he trips or falls down like a hill, something that would change his impetus, like make him lose his balance or startle him or anything. And he would just, at that point, he would kind of tumble to a a stop and run until he couldn't and then he would fall and you know do the thing where you know hands and knees okay I can I just have to to find someone I just have to keep going I have to find someone and I have to get back to them there you are you're on a landing pad and you're actually at the base of the silver shell pretty close to the landing ramp and you hear from the inside someone walking down the landing ramp and clapping. <sighs> oh, you're the one from this transport. And here I was told that it was crashed. And nothing from it could be salvaged at all. Apparently I was misinformed. <sighs> Who are you? And what were you doing on that ship? I was looking for what was mine. A holocron. Perhaps you've seen it. There is nothing. What are you here? So many have said that, but that doesn't appear to be the case. Get out. Or what? You'll run away again? Hillary stops. He he can't reply to this. Because that's all he's been doing for ages at this point and he looks down at his hands and he kind of flexes them and they're not hands made to hurt people they're not hands skilled in physical combat they're they're hands that that clap and flourish and applaud but around one wrist there's a tie that was taken from Markov, and he looks at it, and he thinks, no, running won't work this time. So he, he looks down at his hands, and he sees the tie from Markov, and he sees the tie from Alzol, and he takes them both off and holds them in his hands, hanging down, and he looks over his shoulder, not at anything, but in three directions. And he touches the thing that looks like a necklace that he always wears. It's a a round pendant. I will ask you, he begins to say, tying the, the bands around one each hand and gripping his fists. Once more politely, get out of my home. No. Then I apologize for the mess. 
and he runs. This is a standard human size, so, you know, I mean, he could nut him, but it would take some work. So he actually will run, and as he reaches the edge of the ramp, he will cartwheel up and bounce into the frame of the door, propelling himself into the man's face. And he will put a hand on either side of the man's face and just say, You should have left. I don't know if I can describe it with the whole creepy purple veins, but that's kind of what I'm picturing. Okay. Because he's just holding his face, just squeezing as much as his tiny little hands can squeeze. Are you going to be using a force power on him? That would be harm. That would be harm, yeah. Yes. That was sort of the thing. It's like, are you going to use a force power or were you going to like just be attacking him or which? Hillary doesn't have any faith in his own strength. So he will call upon all of the anger and the hurt and everything that's happened in the past five minutes in the past, you know, year. And he will just pull at that man's life force, holding him by the face, standing on his chest, screaming and crying and snotting all over him. All right. In that case, can I get a force power check? Um, with my new and improved force power. Yeah. <laughs> um, that would be too dark. Oh no, it's about appropriately dark. Oh wait, you mean like you rolled? <laughs> homophones, <laughs> homophones. It is on that that I'm going to fade out on Hillary's vision. It coming to the anger flowing through Hillary. As Hillary's holding on to this human's head and squeezing, trying to do as much harm as they can, it just, in this case, fades to gray. Like, not even really a black, but it fades to a gray. It's at that point where we cut back to Hillary on the silver shell. Time maybe has passed 30 seconds, maybe 30 minutes. And. Then Hillary falls pretty much as if their strings were cut, falling into a sleep. One piece of bookkeeping to take out of that force vision. We now have Hillary needing to do their role after all of Act 1 is now finished. And out of all of this... Other than in a force vision, Hillary has gained no conflict. And in this case, the force vision's sort of everything adjacent, so I'm not counting those. This time, maybe. Okay. This, oh, goodness. This time. So Hillary has no conflict that they have generated from this, but we still do need the D10 roll. Doop. Four. I got a four. All right. So that means you're going up by four. And at the end of that... Here to four, I go up by four. So where does that leave Hillary? Because if I'm remembering right, that should pick you at about 63, I think? Or am I just off? Let me consult the... uh glittery book of notes. I actually have no idea because I've been writing down what conflict we've gained so I'll go back and listen to the conflictisode and tell you. <laughs> oh wait, wait. Conflictisode. I was at 59. I rolled a 9. So then, yes. Hillary now has 63. So I am... 8 away from turning Paragon. I feel all glowy mm. inside. <laughs> but I don't know what it means. And if anyone actually hits that point, we shall find out.
Thank you for listening to this episode of Heroes of the Hydean Way. You can find show updates on Twitter at The Hydean Way, and you can find me, Ben, on Twitter at Deuterium Ice. You can find me, Ren, at Atomic Firebird on Twitter, or at Make Believe Info, where you can find my streaming projects and all that good stuff. You can find me on Twitter at Twelfth Night. That's one, two, T H and Night with a K. You can find me on Twitter at Leslet GS, surrounded by my pod family chanting Fall, Fall, <laughs> Fall in my ears. <laughs> it is the best season. <laughs> Embrace the darkness. Yeah, it actually took me a second too. I was like, yeah, it is fall. <laughs> uh, it is, and I love it. And you can find me on Twitter at Blue of the Kin. Uh, and if you want to find the Star Trek actual play that I do, Endeavor Through the Maelstrom, uh, where Christine also is, that's on Twitter at Endeavor Show with a U. When do we do our uh, Force Visions on that? <laughs> Soon. He worries me because uh, he might not be <laughs> joking. Look, there are lots of strange substances. <laughs> we are all at thehydeanway.com where you can find previous episodes. And you can find more of those episodes on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Plus, you can help us out by rating, reviewing, and subscribing. We're also on Facebook as The Hydean Way. You can holocom us at heroes at com. If you like what we do and want to support the show, or perhaps add your voice to the chorus chanting fall, uh, hop on over to patreon.com slash The Hydean Way. Hey, it's the best time of year. What milestone do we need to hit for... Hillary to just, like, gain 50 conflict immediately. Go full Darth? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> a big one. Or you can help pay your private investigators per diem at ko-fi.com slash the Hydean way. Yes. <laughs> and that's a train. Really? Now? After everything else? <laughs> Something that can muffle trains. Yeah. Suppress. Uh, yep. Suppression. Suppress. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's just force, not sound, though. Yeah. I, I think I would pick the power of manipulate. That way I could uh, fix my technology issues. <laughs> think about the Gunpla building. If you took that right. manipulation For and instance, part of the tree. It would make painting much easier. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have to like use one of my hands to stabilize things i could just everybody would want to be our friends yeah man because we could i could help them move stuff into the house christine mm -hmm. could fix the microwave she broke yeah and the <laughs> ones that don't want to be our friends will once they've talked to yeah. me yeah rin will make them all want to <laughs> want to be our friends <laughs> yeah so I think i'm it's extremely really dark, really charming fast. and you want to be my friend <laughs> uh, okay now i know we don't normally do this this is a fun prompt <laughs> ben ben what would your force yes. power be? <laughs> Wait, what? Yep. Yes. Now I gotta think on that for a few <laughs> moments. the GM. It's okay. Job, we all had to do that too. Use your manipulate, conjure, mm. and fix the GM. Ooh. Yeah, it's kind of a toss-up between conjure and imbue. That was gonna be my second guess. Yeah. Like. P.S. I don't know what either of those do. Conjure is pretty much what it says on the tin. Which the tin says conjure. So yeah, you can <laughs> you can make objects appear out of thin air. Yeah. Like, so like, are you like summoning or creating like a mobile replicas? Yes. Sure. Spectral. So yeah, you're kind of just. It's like a Green Lantern's ring. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Yeah. It's, Especially uh, once you get to the higher levels, it really does start becoming a Green Lantern's ring. I I will admit that like. <clears throat> There was a moment when I decided I, I almost didn't want to do Koba this season because I wanted to instead do somebody who really did conjure. And I just didn't think <laughs> but, but, that but was wait Koba. a minute. But wait a minute. Conjure is perfect for Koba. Vibrorang. Throw. Vibrorang. Throw. It just it, that, it keeps gun given. I guess you're not wrong, that, honestly. <laughs> That makes now, him sound like a Pokemon. I, oh my gosh. Now I want to make a force user with Conjure that is that just uses their force abilities to be a street magician. Yeah. Okay, that's I awesome. That. I, yeah. I, I, I want this like, in my I'm, life now. Yeah. Like, uh, 
the conjure power and then also the night sister universal specialization just work together so amazingly mm-hmm. well i just i just want that yeah because the what the night sister essentially starts off with the ability to craft a weapon and have it disappear and reconjure as part of their t- talents it's amazing okay that's yeah they that's can neat. shove their weapon into hammer space yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then the anime character imbue is basically enchanting. Yeah. You're you're infusing okay. an object with the power of the force for various benefits. Wait, I, I thought imbue infused like like boosted people. Does it also does it, it? it does items? I I admit I couldn't tell you what the actual mechanical effects of imbue are. You're infusing okay, uh, things of some kind. I'm gonna look this up because it might force. just be I have misunderstood or read too quickly. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure that it's people. Yeah, it's people. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it, it's like an enhance, but for people. You you Ooh. boost a uh, an engaged ca- uh, ally's characteristic by one using it, and then you can do what a second oh, characteristic so, eventually. Yeah. This is along the lines yeah. of the uh, helpfully stabbing from yeah. so many other medic trees. Well, then I'm just, I've just assumed imbued did something different, and that's why I've never paid attention. Now I'm Im- immediately more interested. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll admit, I also thought it was that, but no, this. Yeah. Huh. Im- Bew? So we all learned yeah. something today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That that may have been my most conversation uh, inspiring prompt. Yeah. I would say maybe the most focused because, I mean, we do talk a lot during these things one way or the other. True. Very true. Now, now's Good when we have our... Ren. Now's when we have our, like, flashback to how Ren started this and we realized that Ren had just... Uh, hello. ...influenced us into having this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so yes. why didn't somebody take suppress? <laughs> because they want so... me to be powerful. Because it, it's boring. it's boring. Yeah, yeah. Suppress is kind of boring. Who, who who wants to be the person who just cancels out the uh, other people's awesome powers? Just yeah. a uh, contrarian. Like, yeah, I can I can see where it's useful, but mm, as it is, it's mostly a GM power, frankly. I think. So why you what you do is you boring. take suppress and you take um what was the one Ben did conjure and whenever you suppress somebody you just conjure a massive nope sign <laughs> <laughs> okay that is kind of awesome objection <laughs> exactly oh my gosh i'm in love okay okay Ren. that does need to now be some npc and some other uh you make story, your street magician yeah. i'll make my contrarian uh, prosecution no sorry defense lawyer <laughs> defense attorney i will have a little badge and everything <sighs> Okay, so we now know what's happening for the <laughs> Act 2 3 break. Anyway. And. <laughs> Sorry. I'm back. I'm back. And that is where I'm figuring that this one is going to end. To sleep. Perchance to dream. No, thank you.